Story recap tier. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy and horror film called American Carnage. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In America, people from all walks of life are welcomed, including immigrants, because they're essential hard workers for the country. However, in reality, many are still unaccepting of them, with many reputable figures calling them invaders and animals. At a burger chain called Ladies Liberty, one of the cooks, JP, covers for his co-worker's shift in the drive-thru. There, JP encounters a customer that wants a custom order. When JP tells them that they don't do that, the man boasts about his expensive stuff, saying he doesn't care about what they usually do. Furthermore, he throws cash at JP and calls him a racial slur. However, JP broadcasts the man's racism to the entire restaurant with his mic. Thus, the man drives away, but not before telling JP to go back to where he came from. Pulling up the window, the next customer happens to be JP's sister, Lily, with her friend, Andrea. Lily tells JP to be home by 8, so he asks why. Spoiling the surprise, Andrea reveals it's because Lily got into Columbia University. After his shift, JP calls their mom, worried that New York is so far away for Lily to move to. Still, JP wants to be supportive of his sister. On the way home, JP drives past election campaign ads for a Republican governor, Harper Fenn. At home, JP and Lily hang out in his room before the party, so JP takes his chance to congratulate his sister. Just as they're about to take a picture, JP notices that Lily has a new butterfly tattoo behind her ear, so he teases her for being basic. During the party, Lily throws a cootie catcher at JP, which says dork inside. Teasing him further, Lily puts an L sign on her forehead, which JP mirrors. Afterward, their mom congratulates Lily, but before Lily shares her gratitude, a police squad raids their house, apprehending everyone. The news reports Governor Finn's sudden executive order to arrest illegal immigrants, including their children. In the detention center, people of color are locked together. The next day, a few people, including Lily, are escorted into a bus. Although JP tries to catch her attention, she doesn't notice him as she's transported away. After another day, JP talks to her reputable civil rights attorney, Lisa. Lisa assures JP that they aren't done fighting, though it may take a while. Governor Finn intends to immediately deport all illegal immigrants, including his mother. The only way to save her is if someone born in America claims her as a biological family member. JP and Lisa can't do so because they're also detained for aiding and abetting their immigrant mother. Offering an alternative solution, Lisa shows JP a brochure for a nursing home, Alcove, where volunteers take care of the elderly. He can volunteer as part of his community service to get his charges dropped, so he reluctantly agrees. With that, JP goes through the interview with others who joined the program, including Camila, Chris, Big Mac, and Mika. Camila tells the interviewers that she's an activist. Meanwhile, Chris shares that he has chronic anxiety and delusional paranoia. On the other hand, Mac is more carefree, joking that he committed a crime by stealing hearts in the fourth grade. Lastly, Mika is a democratic socialist who came from Argentinian parents. Before the bus ride to the nursing home, the guard, Bruce, reminds them that they can't contact the outside world. Furthermore, they'll be monitored using ankle bracelets to ensure they don't break curfew or try to escape. At Alcove, they meet the founder, Eddie, assuring them that they'll have so much to learn from the senior citizens. Afterward, he passes them off to their operations officers, Cynthia and James. The two show them their rooms, reminding them to be there by curfew or else the ankle bracelets will go off. After touring the place, they get to have their meal, where Mac immediately complains about the awful food. When Mac mentions craving a fish fillet from Lady Liberty, JP breaks the news that it isn't actually fish, and Mac would probably rather not know. With that, Chris mentions that he only trusts his mother not to poison him, saying he won't eat the food they're given. After changing into their uniforms, they start working. Approaching a lone, wheelchair-bound old woman, Greta, JP introduces himself but stumbles over his words, so Mika walks over to assist him. Not knowing what to do, JP starts reading to her, but Greta mumbles, saying JP will die here. She gets upset, so Cynthia rushes over to sedate her before taking her away. During their next mealtime, they try to convince Chris to eat or drink something because he won't last if he doesn't. However, Chris is confident that he'll be able to escape, so Mika provokes him to do it. Chris walks to the door, but just as he tries to open it, an alarm blares. The guards immediately apprehend him with a taser and drag him away. That night, a clattering noise disturbs JP's sleep. Out the hall, he comes across an owl looking at him. When a sudden noise makes JP turn away, the owl disappears. Going back from the bathroom, JP encounters Mrs. Wells, who's muttering nonsense. 
Upon noticing JP, Wells shouts in his face, telling him that Virgil will set him free. As Wells tackles him, Cynthia rushes to sedate her. Disabling the beeping of the ankle bracelet, James calls JP a slur before telling him to go back to his room. The following day, Eddie apologizes for what happened to JP, then shows everyone the rest of the facility. Getting to the ward, Eddie shows them the patients with dementia and Alzheimer's where Wells came from. Upon seeing the patients, JP asks if they could help. With nobody else wanting to participate, JP is left alone with James. As JP assists a patient, Mr. Yates, he asks why the old man is strapped. So JP shows him that Yates is a biter. Hearing James curse at the old man, JP tells him off, but James just calls him a distasteful racial term. With tension rising between the two, Eddie asks if everything's fine, so James says everything's alright. Going back to work, the two cooperate in putting Yates to bed, but as JP does, another old man bites him on the arm. Bleeding, JP starts losing consciousness. Upon waking up, JP sees his wound patched up then finds Lily at the side, who explains that they've only been a mile apart. Walking to the window, Lily turns to JP, making him promise to take care of things. However, JP suddenly sees blood spreading on the walls, making him jolt awake from the nightmare. In reality, Mika's watching over him and checks on his wound when he wakes up. Later, Mac complains about his food again, craving a burger. However, JP worries about Chris, so when Cynthia walks by their table, Camila asks about their missing friend. Thus, Cynthia tells them that Chris was sent back to the detention center. As Cynthia walks away, Mac whispers to the group, realizing that Cynthia is lying. Taking Chris's inhaler from his pocket, Mac tells them that he found it in the hallway and there was no way Chris left without it. That night, Mac strolls with Greta to Mr. Phillips' room for movie time. Preoccupied with setting up the TV, Mac doesn't notice Phillips' bone in his fingers cracking as he reaches out. When he turns, Mac notices that Phillips isn't breathing anymore. Suddenly, the old man snaps into a sitting position before falling to the floor. Mac backs away in fear as he sees the man contorting, bending in inhumane ways. He starts crawling backward before twisting further, so Mac runs away, leaving Greta alone, screaming. The next day, Eddie sits everyone down to announce Philip's death. Afterward, Eddie calls over JP and James, taking them outside to meet Virgil, the owl and gatekeeper of the alcove. Noting how the owl does its duties, Eddie turns to the two, hoping to trust them not to fight again. Upon coming to an understanding, Eddie leaves them to hug it out, but James whispers that he'll make JP's life a living hell. However, JP takes advantage of the hug as he swipes the keys from James. That night, JP unlocks his ankle bracelet and sneaks out of his room to see Mac, only to find him pampering himself with a face mask and dancing in his room in a bathrobe. Next, he goes to Camila, inviting her to a pool party. As he removes Camila's ankle bracelet, she teases him about Mika, saying she'd also hit on Mika if she were into girls. Finally, he goes to get Mika, and soon, they're lounging in the pool. With a bottle of brandy, the two flirt. Mika teases his senses by making him smell the brandy, caressing his face, whispering in his ear, asking how she looks, then kissing him. Afterward, they go to the clinic to hook up. The following day, JP opens his eyes to see Miss Wilcox staring back at him. Already in her uniform, Mika walks in to assist the old woman back to her room. Later, Mac teases him about Mika, asking if they hooked up, so JP confirms it. Just then, JP notices Greta playing with a cootie catcher, so he approaches, remembering how Lily often made the same thing. When JP asks whether Greta knows Lily, she slowly hands him the cootie catcher and grabs his hands, so Cynthia and James rush over to sedate her again. Afterward, Mac and Camila share they couldn't remember anything after the pool party. JP notices a weird mark on the back of Camila's neck, which he immediately recognizes as a needle mark from the sedative. That night, JP plays with the cootie catchers only to open one of the folds and see the word help. Immediately, JP sneaks into the ward to check on Greta, but when he sees the lights open, he hides under the bed as Cynthia and James walk in. Once the coast is clear, JP checks Greta's neck and sees the butterfly tattoo, realizing that Greta has been his sister this whole time. JP walks back in fear, but James knocks him out. The next day, everybody enjoys burgers as Mac looks for JP. With Chris and JP's mysterious disappearance, Mac plans to snoop around. Assigning Camila on lookout duty, Mac and Mika sneak inside James's office. Upon picking a locked drawer, Mac finds blueprints of a machine as well as their profiles, where they see Chris marked under solitary. Seeing James returning, Camilla tries to stall him, but he just rudely sends her away. Inside, the two hide as James enters. Taking a moment to drink liquor, James complains about his job before leaving. Just as they're about to escape, the door opens again, making them run back to hide. When James finally leaves for good, the two breathe sighs of relief. Meanwhile, JP wakes up, strapped to a chair alongside others like him. However, half of their faces are turned old and wrinkly. 
Outside, James orders Mac to fix the vent. On the other hand, Camilla's patient accidentally knocks over his tray, but when she cleans up the mess, she notices the old man is gone. Suddenly, the old man ambushes Cynthia with the table knife, but when Bruce pushes him out of the way, they accidentally topple Mac's ladder, knocking him unconscious as he falls. In the lab, Bruce calls James for help over the radio, so James assigns a worker to go. When the woman exits, JP watches as she uses the keypad to unlock the door, so he squeezes his hands out of the straps. At Lady Liberty's, Eddie meets up with Finn, proud that the burgers are selling well, though neither of them has eaten any. While JP escapes, Mac wakes up in the clinic but pretends to be asleep since Bruce and Cynthia are around. At the door, JP struggles with the passcode, only to see the L marking on the keypad, realizing that Virgil is the passcode. However, James sees the empty chair, so he immediately notifies everyone that JP's gone. With that, Cynthia and Bruce leave Mac alone before they can do anything to him. As JP runs to escape, he comes across the machine room and sees human bodies ground into patties for Lady Liberties. Meanwhile, Eddie explains to Governor Finn the entire process, that they inject the kids with highly effective hormones that tenderize their bodies. In shock, JP continues to run but encounters Mika. Just as James corners them, JP is blindsided as Mika sedates him, clarifying that they didn't hook up since she doesn't sleep with the help. Walking up in the machine room, JP is strapped onto a wheelchair face to face with Eddie. When JP calls him a cannibal, Eddie says he doesn't eat the burgers. Instead, he calls himself an American, something that JP will never be. Mika then enters as Eddie reveals that with the advancement of technology, they don't need people like JP anymore. He adds that Lisa was in it as well, sending people like JP so they can process them to supply the only thing they can offer to the American people, their bodies. Meanwhile, Camila tries to lockpick her ankle bracelet but with no luck. Just in time, a key falls from the vent, coming from Mac. Immediately, Camila sneaks into the cafeteria and breaks a tinted window, seeing that they were being thoroughly monitored. Before she could look further, James grabs her from behind. Left alone with Mika, JP asks what they did to Lily. JP tears up as he listens to Mika explaining the effects of the anti-anxiety meds they slipped into Lily's drink as soon as she volunteered there. Then, they injected her with hormones to tenderize her meat, causing aging as a side effect, including dementia. Although the aging wasn't an intended effect, it turned out to be the perfect cover. Meanwhile, Cynthia sedates Camila as she struggles from their hold. Continuing to explain, Mika tells Eddie that a surge of violence is triggered before their body shuts down, such as the phenomena with Phillips. This lets them know that the body is ready for the grinder. At the ward, Camila watches an ad for Lady Liberties as JP approaches her, both their bodies already aging. Knowing they'll meet their demise soon, JP tells Camila that they should attempt an escape. Later, JP talks to Lily, hoping to make her remember. Reminiscing on their old memories, they tear up as Lily responds with a smile and a nod, even doing the L sign on her forehead with JP. At night, Cynthia, James, and Mika make their rounds. However, Camila ambushes them, kicking their cart before the elderly victims surround them. With that, JP makes his escape, but Bruce comes after him. Hiding inside a room, JP jumps on Bruce as he enters, but Bruce manages to shake him off and pull off his catheter, making JP scream in pain. In the ward, a full-on brawl erupts while Mac continues to crawl through the vents. He sees JP struggling with Bruce, so he jumps down to choke Bruce with a catheter. Afterward, Mac assists JP in escaping, but they get stuck in the brawl as the elderly and the caretakers confront each other in the hall. Thus, JP climbs through the bodies to escape, following Camilla and Lily to the elevator as Mac stays behind to help the others. Before the doors close, JP looks back at the gruesome scene with blood splattering over the doors as the victims show no mercy. Getting to the bottom floor, JP volunteers to look for the exit. Meanwhile, Mac leads the rest of the folks to escape as they cheer for their freedom. Outside, a jogger returns to her car when the folks block her path. When Mac appears beside her window, asking to use her phone, she immediately backs away with a scream. Back inside, JP finds himself back in the machine room and encounters Chris inside a cage, old but still alive. Before they could properly converse, Eddie grabs JP and starts choking him, but JP's able to grab a glass jar, fending Eddie off him. However, Eddie dodges JP's attacks and slams his head onto a table. With JP unconscious, Eddie drags him to the machine. Fortunately, Camila follows behind with Lily, grabbing a log to incapacitate Eddie and pull JP off the machine. As Eddie throws Camila away, JP tries to attack again, but Eddie easily grabs him. Just then, Chris's final surge of violence is triggered, so Lily presses a button to free him from his cage, allowing him to grab Eddie's jaw and easily snap it off. Finally, they put Eddie's body in the grinder, turning him into patties. The three soon escape and recuperate on a nearby beach. Just then, Mac and his group finally find them, but he notices that they're unresponsive. With their escape, the news spread like wildfire about the inhumane cannibalism and Finn fleeing the country. While scientists find a way to reverse the damage, the people involved in the case, like Lisa, are jailed and the immigrants are released from prison. 
As Mac mourns over his friends, JP suddenly shushes him. He starts to laugh with Camila as it turns out they were just joking around with Mac. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.